Uh, Dr. Boyke, a uh, couple of questions. You know, the uh, National uh, Health Service, which is the, the authorization organization in Europe and the UK and other countries have adopted PSMA PET imaging for the staging at initial diagnosis of prostate cancer. But here in the US, we're lagging behind and it's not approved at this, at this point in time for the initial diagnosis, or maybe it is, and I'm just having trouble getting it. Uh, but it's one of those things like, how can we make this a standard of care? And what do you think is the role of standard of care for this technology uh, for patients with newly diagnosed prostate cancer? Should all patients with prostate cancer newly diagnosed get uh, PSMA PET CT imaging, or should it be used for different stage or grade disease at the time of diagnosis? Yeah, so so this is a, a great question. And, and like you said, we're, we're kind of lagging a little bit in the US. So the first PSMA agent in the US that was FDA approved was uh, actually FDA approved in May of 2021. So it was during COVID and maybe it had a slow uptake. You know, we started using it then. Um, the guidelines came out uh, quite quickly afterwards where the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, um, the Society of Nuclear Medicine, they went through these use cases that really drill down to what stages would benefit most. And it, it's based on the clinical trials um, that, uh, that we've been discussing. Um, so when you have a patient based on the FDA indication, when you have a patient that you're suspecting for metastasis with higher risk disease, so an elevated Gleason score, an elevated grade group, a PSA, you know, over 20, you know, those are higher risk patients um, and they should undergo PSMA PET. And that's what the guidelines say. Um, in the US, we have prior authorization and we have hoops that we need to jump through. Um, but, you know, those are coming around. Everything new, you know, requires that. Um, really the, the difficult one to tease out at first diagnosis is are these patients that have unfavorable intermediate risk. So just to back up a little bit, when we talk about prostate cancer at diagnosis, there's lower risk, there's intermediate risk, and then there's high risk. High risk is getting PSMA PET. Um, but in this uh, era of intermediate risk or this range, sometimes you're a little bit closer to high, sometimes you're a little bit closer to low. And if you're a little bit closer to high or what we call unfavorable intermediate risk, and there's several factors that can put you there, um, those patients are recommended to get PSMA PET too. But it requires very specific documentation by the physician in order to get that prior authorization for that. Thank you for your input. Thanks for your help.